Hi, this is Michael Sean Comerford coming to you from the Story Cycle. Americans in a pandemic, riding Route 66 from Chicago to LA, asking COVID questions. I'm here in Seligman, Arizona, and I am uh, about a hundred, a couple hundred miles from uh, California, and I am updating the background behind these incredible interviews and uh, the bicycle riding, the, the where, where do you sleep, uh, who do you meet off camera sort of stuff. And I will promise to make it as quick as I can. I, my last update was in the middle of uh, New Mexico and now I'm sort of in the middle of Arizona. Uh, last hundred miles to uh, Albuquerque, I was, basically that's where my last update was to you. Um, was on a bicycle that had broken spokes. And so I have had broken, I have had a broken down bicycle, spokes, one thing or another, in Illinois, Missouri, and in Oklahoma. And that time was in New Mexico. And uh, I did make it that last 80 to 100 miles into Albuquerque, coming in there, and uh, rolled into a bicycle, up to a bicycle store where they wouldn't allow you in because of COVID. So they came outside, diagnosed the bicycle, brought the bicycle inside, fixed it. The next day I rode out of town about 25 miles and the bicycle broke down again. And this time I, well, I turned around and I bicycled back 25 miles, so I put in 50 and uh, this time I went back to their uh, shop and they said, well, you know what, this needs uh, more help than we can give it right now. We, it's going to be a week or more before we can treat it. Uh, and I, so I said, well, I'll, I'll try another shop. And I did, the Bicycle Coop and they, or co-op, and they, uh, they gave me a back wheel with Folks, and uh, and two new tires. So I am hopeful. They said uh, that they would get me all the way to California, and they gave me an interview. And uh, so we had a very fruitful time there in Albuquerque, and including I was able to get a Johnson and Johnson shot at the local uh, Walgreens, even though I wasn't a resident. I. Uh, I was notified on my phone that it was possible. I had heard it on the grapevine that it was also possible. And uh, so I signed up for a, for a, uh, a vaccination and got it. Found out later that day that, uh, that there was some trouble with uh, blood clots. Um, but, uh, but I am vaccinated and I feel very good about that. I rode from Albuquerque on out to about 60 miles and I was worried because as the day became evening I needed a place to sleep and there were no hotels on these Pueblo areas that I was riding into. And all the little towns that might have had a hotel that all were closed. They had quarantine uh, signs up on the uh, roads entering their villages and uh, saying no visitors, saying, uh, well, no visitors. And so I was, I was stumped as to where I was going to sleep. And um, I came upon a town called Camara, and that town I think is unincorporated. I don't see it on the map, any population, but it did have two uh, churches there. And, uh, and so, I went into one of the, I went to one of the churches, knocked on the door, and uh, somebody came out saying, "Well, uh, you know, what do you want?" And I said, "I'm asking a, a, for a good Samaritan favor. May I sleep somewhere out back, hidden on your property, so that uh, no one sees me overnight? There's no hotels. It's COVID time. Good Samaritan." And uh, I don't know if that person was the. Uh, minister, uh, but I do know he said, no, you cannot. So I went to the other church and there was no one there. So I went down the street and there was 
only one other business in town. Two churches and a liquor store and slash bar called the Midway Bar. And I went in there and there was a guy with a beard and a mask and bulked up. I later find out he's a veteran of three tours of Iraq and one in uh, Afghanistan. And there was a young uh, lady there with him sitting nearby. And uh, I said, look, I'm thirsty. He says, here, have a free wa water on the house. And then uh, I said, well, I really need a, a place to sleep. The church said, no, just right down the street. He goes, well, you can sleep out back. And I said, thanks. And, and I went out back and I, I got an interview from him and I got an interview from his girlfriend who was from a local, uh, from a local Pueblo. And, uh, and she came out later and said, do you want free pizza? So I said, no, I don't want free pizza, but I had, at that stop, I had a rest stop, I had a uh, water, I had two interviews, and I had a place to sleep, and there was a throwaway carpet in the back, so I threw my tent on top of the carpet and fell asleep. And uh, that was not an all bad night, but it was, uh, it started out very precarious. I also was able to go across the Great Divide in New Mexico on a snowy, freezing cold day and uh, uh, had to uh, change uh, gloves along the way in order to make it, but did. It was very enjoyable and beautiful. And, uh, and that, it was So it didn't work. The security guys came by, they tossed me off very kindly, very nicely, but they tossed me off and I, I drove my bicycle, rode my bicycle over the uh, I-40. I uh, just have to watch that a little bit. And uh, so I went out into the desert, thought I was going to pitch my tent to the desert, and I hear howling. So I don't know if this is wild dogs. It wasn't barking. So it could have been coyotes, or it could have just been domestic dogs. But whatever it was, I didn't want to mess with animals. I'm putting up my tent again in the middle of the desert, and the night has fallen, and it was dark. I didn't know what to do. I was kind of disoriented. So I just go get closer to the interstate, and uh, and I did, and I on an incline. I my bike on an incline, a hill, and I took out, took out my sleeping bag and I laid on the side of the hill. And this is a dark sky country near Flagstaff. And uh, I looked up at the stars and I saw more stars than I'd seen in decades. I, you could honestly believe that you were seeing billions of stars and had cosmic thoughts about life and death and what everything means in life and uh, and it wasn't peaceful it was a, there were trucks going by and cars and, but it was beautiful in the desert and it got very cold that night it was 30 degrees but uh, then I got into Flagstaff early the next day and I was in my own mind a celebrity because I was on the front page of the Arizona Sun, their major newspaper in Flagstaff. And here is the, here it is. I hope you can read that. Listening to the COVID, listening to COVID-19 stories along Route 66. And uh, so I, I had a great interview there. And, uh, and oh, I had many interviews with uh, people in Flagstaff that were terrific uh, as a way of, uh, of giving more background on all these rides uh, that are off interview 
And I wanted to mention that there is so much nature out here. The wind, the, the cold, the heat. Uh, ahead of me are going to be deserts in a lot of uh, degree days. But right now it's 55 degrees and the wind is about 20 something uh, miles an hour. But, uh, but also I got to see wild horses roaming around and I, and I got to see two vultures, a road runner, uh, legions of par prairie dogs, uh, hawks, dozens and dozens of hawks, and, and uh, a roadkill. Uh, I saw a porcupine, a large porcupine, a wild hog or a wild boar, and uh, a pony, a wild, a wild horse. And, um, and so all these things are the background to these incredible COVID stories. And uh, there are even stories that are off camera. People just don't want to go on camera with. And I'll be writing about uh, more. I'm taking them down in the diary. But all of this is going on uh, as background to this historic year where COVID is We are adjusting to COVID, where we are living with COVID, and uh, these stories are the people that I meet along the way, and uh, these updates are just a little bit about how I'm getting them and, uh, and how I'm coping with the, with the project itself. I'll see you there out on the road.